Hello friends, this video Polynomials Part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched Polynomials Part 1 to Part 11. Let's take one more example. We have to obtain all other zeros of this function, this uh, polynomial of degree 4, where two of the zeros are root 5 by 3 and minus root 5 by 3. Correct? Now we know that if these are the zeros, uh, this and this is the zeros of this function. So x minus, let's suppose this is alpha and this is beta, right? So x minus alpha into x minus beta, whatever we'll get, that should divide this value. Why? Because x minus alpha into x minus beta is dividing this function. Because alpha and beta are zero as function. So x minus alpha and x minus beta should divide this function. Correct. See, if alpha and beta are roots of this equation, this uh, polynomial, then x minus alpha into x minus beta should divide this. Once it's divide this, whatever quotient you get, right, that will be the power of 2 because this is power of 2 here, this is power of 4. So if you divide anything power of 2 by power of 4, you'll get something in power of 2. Correct? So you get something in power of 2. And from that, we can easily find other two values. So let's do that. X minus alpha into x minus beta is nothing but x minus root 5 by 3 into x plus root of 5 by 3. There's nothing but x minus a into, into x plus b. There is nothing but x square minus a square. There's nothing but x square minus root of 5 by 3 whole square. Correct? And this is nothing but x square minus 5 by 3. Or we can say nothing but 3 into, sorry, 1 by 3 into 3x square minus 5. Now, if this is of this form, that means 3x square minus 5 should divide this equation. And whatever we get, that will also be a factor of this. So we'll say 3x square minus 5, let's this divide by 3x to the power 4 plus 6x cubed minus 2x square minus 10x minus 5. Let's divide this. This is 3x to the power 4, this is 3x to the power 2. So we have to multiply by x square. So this becomes 3x to the power 4 minus 5x square like right here. Right? This is cancelled. This becomes 6x cubed minus or actually plus because minus 2x square minus minus 5 that is plus 3x square minus 10x minus 5. This becomes plus 2x. Why? Because 2x into 3x square is going to 6x cubed. It becomes 6x cubed minus 10x. Correct? This and this is cancelled. So I'll get 3x square minus 4x. Five. And that is nothing but if you multiply with 1, you get this. Done. So I got this as quotient. Right? So quotient is nothing but x square plus 2x plus 1. That is nothing but x plus 1 whole square. Correct? Now, if this is the quotient, if you want to make it 0, this is nothing but, let's suppose, if px is equal to x plus 1 whole square, I want to find pk where this is equal to 0. So if this is equal to 0, x is equal to minus 1. So we can say minus 1 is a 0 of this x plus 1 whole square. Correct? So we can say that the other 0 of this function is minus 1. Why? Because this whole function I can write in this form x minus root 5 by 3. The whole px I'm talking about. The whole this, let's suppose this, let's suppose this whole is ax. Let's suppose ax. I'll give you term ax. So ax is nothing but x minus root 5 by 3 into x plus root 5 by 3, right? Into x plus 1 whole square is x plus 1 into x plus 1. This is my whole x. That means this alpha, beta, gamma 1, gamma 2. 
they are all zeros of this function. We already know that this n is zero. The next zero that is we don't know till now is minus one. Why? Because this was whole a x. I divided this by this number. This number I got x plus one whole square. So I can write this function that is three x four plus six x cubed minus three x square plus ten x minus five x x minus root five by three into x plus root five by three. This whole root five by three is actually into x plus one into x plus one. That means we can say that minus one is also a zero of this function because if we put x equal to minus one, the whole thing becomes zero. Because this becomes zero, right? The whole x becomes zero. Correct. So we can say that the other zero is minus. Let's take one more example. We are told that on dividing x cube minus three x square plus x plus two by g x, the quotient and the remainder are x minus two and both respectively. That is, let me write this: x cube minus three x square plus x plus two. This is nothing but some gx function into quotient is minus two x plus four. Sorry, the quotient is x minus two into x minus two, and the remainder is minus two x plus. Correct? Why we say that a number divisor is equal to divided into quotient plus remainder? We know this. This was the number. This was the full uh, polynomial. When you divide this by gx, you get x minus two as quotient and minus two x plus four as remainder. Correct? Or I can write this same gx as gx will be nothing but x cube minus three x square plus x plus two. This will take this side. So this becomes two x minus four by x minus. Two. Correct. That means we have to divide these two numbers, and that is what g x is. So let's do that. So we'll divide x minus two by this number. This is x cube. We'll arrange in ascending order. Descending order minus three x square. Plus x plus two x that is plus three x plus two minus four that is minus two. We we'll divide this. This is x. This is x cube. So we have to multiply with x square. So we'll get x cube minus two x square. All right. This cancels. Minus three x square plus two x square. This is going to minus x square plus three x. This is minus x square. This is x. So we'll multiply with minus x. This becomes minus x square plus x. Cancel this. So it is going to two x because this is two three x minus two x becomes x minus two x. This. this is plus one. You multiply with one, you get x minus two. This is cancel. So what do you got? X square minus x plus one. And that is what we were looking for. This is nothing but this is our answer. Very simple. What we have done, we were told that when x square minus x cube minus three x square plus x plus two, then you divide by g x, you get x minus two as quotient and minus two x plus four as remainder. So we wrote the equation in this form. So we got g x is equal to this whole thing divided by x minus two. We just divided the whole thing by x minus two. We got x square minus x plus one, and that is g. Now let's go for the summary. Polynomial of degree one, two, and three are called linear, quadratic, and cubic polynomials. We have learned this, correct? So, if you have x cube form of equation, it is cubic. If you have x square, it is quadratic. If you have x plus two form of equation, this is linear. A quadratic polynomial in x with real coefficient is of the form a x square plus b x plus c, where a and b are real numbers. A is not equal to c. This is for quadratic polynomial. Correct. Right. The zeros of a polynomial function p x is nothing but the point where the graph of this function intersect the x axis. The zero is nothing but the graph you draw the graph of the function, and the point it meets the x axis that is called zeros. If it meets at two places, there are two zeros. If you meet at three places, there are three zeros. If it doesn't meet, there are no zeros. Right. 
quadratic polynomial can have at the max two zeros quadratic and the cubic can have at the max three zeros right if alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic polynomial a x square plus b x plus c then we have seen that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a and alpha beta is equal to c by a similarly for cubic polynomial this is cubic polynomial if alpha beta and gamma are zeros of cubic polynomial a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus d why does cubic because power is 3 then alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to minus b by a alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha uh, gamma alpha is c by a and alpha beta gamma is equal to minus d by a similarly for division algorithm it says that for any polynomial p x and any non-zero polynomial z x they are polynomial q x and r x such that px is equal to gx into qx plus rx. qx is the quotient, rx is the remainder. That is, if you divide px with gx, you get qx as the quotient, rx is the remainder. Where rx is equal to 0 or rx degrees is equal to is less than gx degree or greater than 0. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests. Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.